while installed rooftop solar PV capacity could amount to something like 20 gigawatts in the next decade, it would appear that the draft IRP takes no account of the impact of this, and in particular the impact on the reduction of new capacity required from conventional utility scale generation capacity. Is this a sign of serious myopia in the IRP planning process? That's why I said when, when we drafted the document, the IRP as the department in the IRP, and we received comments, and hence you could see that I said there are things that we have to go and redo. So we are acknowledging the issue of embedded generation um, that it needs to come into the IRP. And we, we, it's one of those that was left, it's something that has been addressed. Uh, we're hoping, I know people have been saying to me, Minister, uh, promulgate, when we want to see, uh, we're looking in the in the Gazette, we're not seeing you gazetting uh, the issues around embedded generation. We want to do that once we conclude the IRP, um, because that will give us an indication of what we need, mm -hmm. where we need, and we are appealing for patience. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have been waiting for some time, but we almost there. Just a little more patience, we'll be able to gazette for them. Um, the uh, similarly, electric vehicles are expected to make massive inroads in the next 30 years. Several million electric vehicles are anticipated in South Africa by 2050 with several hundred gigawatts of associated battery storage capacity. Yet no account of this appears to have been taken within the draft IRP 2016, both in terms of electricity demand for charging this energy storage capacity every day, as well as the supply that can come from this capacity into the grid. Can the impact of electric vehicles really be ignored in the IRP planning process to 2050? Not at all. It can be ignored. It's something that is happening. Um, the manufacturer and motor sector is looking at it um, and preparing for it. Um, the IEP does look at the scenarios around motor vehicles, uh, electric and motor vehicles. With the revised IRP, you definitely see um, it's coming in because we're looking at the impact of those technologies. We have to look at that. Uh, hence, I'm saying we had a full day workshop on the IRP uh, documents because we had to look at what came in as inputs. But as well, to get a step back because, for example, there wasn't much on gas on the initial uh, documents issued to the 2016 drafts. So we had to look at it to say, okay, can you ignore this? You can't. You can't ignore gas. You can't ignore the issues of electric vehicle. A lot of people, are, once they start coming into the market, we need to be ready. And we have no way of stopping them, by the way, um, as, 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 as the department and government. Um, if there is business for them, they're going to help. Now, the issue for us is to be able to acknowledge that. And that's why I said, the scenarios, the base cases, had to be, it's now, they are now being reworked because taking into consideration all these issues that have been left out and have now been considered. So based on some of the submissions we, re we received, some of the work is being done and this is one of the areas that we are looking at. It. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, this, this is one of the areas that we should look in anticipation as, as government more in creating factories, creating new jobs, new opportunities. How best can we utilize this to the advantage of South Africa?